Well, good morning, everybody. I uh, want to welcome everyone, of course, to uh, the city of Long Beach. And uh, my name is Robert Garcia. Uh, I'm the mayor, and we're really happy to be here today, of course, to welcome uh, the governor, uh, but also um, some, some friends and some special guests as well. I want to start by thanking uh, two individuals that will also be making some remarks, uh, and that is our state senator uh, here for Long Beach, uh, Lena Gonzalez, who's with us today. So I want to thank her for being here. Uh, and I also want to thank uh, our supervisor, uh, Janice Hong who is um, really our strongest supporter uh, across the region. So I'm very grateful to both of them, and I want to thank both of them for, for being here. Uh, I also just want to, of course, uh, start uh, by thanking uh, the governor for visiting Long Beach today. Uh, he had just had a chance right now uh, to speak with about 100 of our uh, key folk that run this mass vaccination clinic. Uh, pretty soon, we're going to start letting the cars that have already lined up outside into our vaccination clinic. And every morning, um, about 100 folks that really make up the team that run this operation gather uh, at an early morning meeting. Uh, this is a combination of National Guardsmen and women, of our uh, nurses, our health department team, firefighters, police officers, uh, and the governor just uh, had a chance to go and speak to them at their morning meeting, and most importantly, thank them for the incredible work they do every single day. So we're very grateful that the governor was able to join them uh, for their meeting. I also want to say that as of this morning, uh, California is making incredible progress in its vaccinations. Over 7.3 million of our Californians have now uh, been uh, uh, vaccinated with doses, the first doses, some second doses. And beyond that, we're seeing, of course, incredible progress of the amount of vaccines that are coming into uh, the state and then going out into health departments and into cities. Now here uh, in Long Beach, we, of course, have vaccinated our healthcare workers, 100% of our nursing homes, uh, firefighters, police officers, and about a month ago, started vaccinating our food and grocery workers, as well as our teachers and educators. Uh, in fact, today, uh, after uh, uh, this uh, press availability, uh, we'll probably be vaccinating almost a thousand teachers who will be receiving their second dose. And so um, we are really excited about that. Uh, and um, I always tell folks that uh, uh, Governor Newsom and the state um, allowed health jurisdictions to start vaccinating teachers actually a month ago. And so uh, uh, almost to the day that the governor and the state said, you can start vaccinating teachers, uh, Long Beach moved and started vaccinating teachers. And that's allowed us to have a plan to reopen schools safely uh, this upcoming month, next month. Uh, and we encourage and have encouraged all health jurisdictions to begin vaccinating educators across the state. And of course, uh, every single day, uh, we vaccinate those that need the vaccine the most, which are our seniors, our 65 plus seniors. And of course, many of them will be vaccinated here at the convention center uh, later today. Uh, with that, I wanna, um, uh, as I introduce here our governor, I just wanna note that uh, Long Beach and cities up and down the state of California uh, are fortunate uh, to have a governor that uh, answers the phone, whose staff is attentive, who gets us what we need. When, when our own city has had issues around uh, you know, a vaccine being late or we need to ensure that second doses are met, it's been the governor and his staff uh, that have ensured every single day that our operations have run smoothly. So uh, he has uh, taken a bold approach to this serious problem. We are still in a massive pandemic and crisis, but we're very, very grateful uh, to the governor and his leadership and his plans as we reopen the state. And so with that, I want to go ahead and introduce uh, Governor Gavin Newsom. Thank you, um, Mayor Garcia. It's an honor to be here um, and to see firsthand what we've all been reading about what we've been talking about up and down the state of California, and that's leadership by example. People that get it, but more importantly, get it done. Uh, Long Beach has been a demonstrable leader in the vaccination efforts and our testing efforts. Throughout this pandemic, Long Beach has been a standout, an exceptional example of a city at scale doing remarkable things. I said to the team outside, that includes many of our uh, National Guard men and women, firefighters, nurses, nurses now from all over the country uh, that are also helping support these collective efforts, um, that uh, success leaves clues. And we have been able to model 
the success here in Long Beach in other municipalities, large and small, all across the state of California. I've had the privilege of traveling uh, to every part of this state. We'll be up in the Central Valley later this afternoon, make our way back uh, into the Sacramento region. Yesterday, uh, we were at a number of sites, including down in Inglewood, uh, working to support efforts to advance the cause of equity, particularly in African-American churches, and make sure that we are meeting people where they are, including public housing sites, Boyle Heights, among other places uh, in LA. Those efforts are being replicated here in Long Beach, not just at large vaccination sites, but small pop-up sites all throughout this community. And that's the kind of example of leadership we need to see replicated all across this state. Uh, as the mayor said, uh, we now have vaccinated over 7.3 million people. In fact, in a few hours, that number will be updated. We're getting close to 7.5 million people that have received at least one dose of the vaccination. That's now more than the country of Israel. Uh, there are only a few countries in the world that have vaccinated more people than the state of California. We're averaging just shy of 200,000 doses administered each and every day. About 1.4 million were administered over the last week. And while that's important and significant to highlight, it's also important and significant to highlight this stubborn fact. There's not enough vaccinations. There's not enough doses. There's not enough vaccines to accommodate the need and demand. Just at this site, they're running about a third of capacity. Sites all across the state of California are toggling back based upon limited supply. That's a manufacturing issue. Manufactured supply in the United States of America is limited. And while it's good that we are administering roughly 200,000 doses a day, we're receiving just shy of that if you average the amount of doses we receive on a weekly basis. It was about 1.3 million we received last week. This week, we anticipate receiving about 1.4 million next week. And we are great, we're very grateful for the visibility now from the Biden administration. We'll receive about 1.5 million doses of the vaccines. It's simply not what we're capable of administering, meaning we could do exponentially more, but nonetheless, we are seeing modest improvement week to week, and that's allowing us to not only take care of vaccinating the vaccinators and vaccinating our most vulnerable, our seniors, but as the mayor has been doing for now weeks and weeks, vaccinating our teachers as well so we can get our kids back into in-person instruction, which is foundational and fundamental and critical to their social and emotional health. It's foundational in terms of getting this economy open. And if you care about women, you care about moms, particularly single mothers, there's nothing more essential and more important we can do to support working women and single moms in particular than getting our youngest kids back into school in cohorts where we can do it safely. And Long Beach is not waiting around to do that. This mayor has been doing that for weeks and weeks. 35 counties have been for weeks now administering doses of vaccines to teachers, but none at the level that Long Beach is doing. As a consequence of that leadership, they announced a date to reopen their schools for their youngest cohorts for in-person instruction. And I just want to applaud that. I want to recognize that. And I want to encourage that to be replicated all throughout the state of California. The state has put out guidelines that allow for safely reopening these youngest cohorts. We can begin that today. At the same time, we recognize we must do it safely. We must value our educators. And our educators are not just our teachers. Our educators are all the classified staff Educators include the people that make schools work, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, our custodial staff. And that's why this state is prioritizing an additional 75,000 doses every single week, 10% set aside of all the first doses the state of California receives will be going directly prioritized to that cohort, to our educators and childcare workers, which are also essential to getting our schools reopened as well. So we're moving in that direction with clarity, with determination, but cities like Long Beach are not waiting. And we encourage others not to wait to prioritize this cohort, recognizing that scarcity is the limiting factor as it relates to the existing tiers and the need and desires of tens of millions of Californians to get these vaccines. Two 
brief final words. We're blessed as well to have some remarkable partners in this process, not just the incredible workers that are making this happen, this large site, not just the mayor, but Senator Gonzalez, who's been a real leader, not only in supporting the efforts on vaccinations, but supporting our essential workers and in making sure we're supporting our small businesses. She's been one of the leaders getting now two plus billion dollars in small business grants. We'll be announcing that, we hope, as early as tomorrow, and we'll start to distribute billions of dollars of grants, not loans, to our smallest businesses. We thank the Senator for incredible leadership in that space. $3.8 billion she's advocated for to get in the pockets of some 5.7 million Californians, what we call the Golden State Stimulus, direct checks that will also be part of the package that gets done tomorrow. So I want to recognize the Senator's incredible leadership. And then my friend, years and years, former Congresswoman, now one of the principal leaders on the LA Board of Supervisors, Janice Hahn, has just been an amazing partner and advocate. And when I say advocate, she demands more of all of us. And she, is, she knows we're capable of doing better. And I can assure you, when Robert was just saying, the mayor was just saying about having access to cell phone, uh, Supervisor Hahn certainly has access to mine. And she has been fierce in terms of her conviction, her faith and devotion to the cause that unites each and every one of us here today, including getting our schools safely reopened. I just want to applaud her for not being timid at a time when we need leadership, we need people to step up and step in, we need people with clarity and conviction, and she demonstrably has that as well. These are three remarkable leaders. I'm honored to be with them here today. I'm honored to be with all of you here down in Long Beach today. I want to thank everybody all across this state for their patience, their perseverance, and I've said this yesterday, I'll say it again today, in multiple stops throughout the state, and I'll say it tomorrow and the upcoming days. We are making progress. There's not just light at the end of the tunnel, there's a bright light at the end of the tunnel. And let me just close by putting a punctuation point on that. 3.0% positivity rate today. Just consider 30 days ago, it was 8.9%, 3% today. It's a third of what it was just a month ago. A month ago today, we reported the highest number of deaths ever recorded in the state of California, 764. Today, we report tragically, still too many, 233 deaths, but a far cry of where we were just a month ago today. A month ago today, we were 23,000 cases reported of COVID. Today, just shy of 4,700, 23,000 to 4,700. Two weeks ago today, our hospitalizations and ICU admissions were significantly higher than where they are today, down 41% and 39% respectfully. 41% decline hospitalizations, 39% decline in the ICUs. We are in a much better place than we've been in some time. Vaccination increasing, continuing to see a pace of reopening safely with the modifications, getting our kids to start playing sports again safely. Now, competition, now I'm opening up. But the fundamental reason I'm here, not only to celebrate success, but also to reinforce the example of leadership down here of reopening our schools and the essential importance that we place on getting our youngest kids in particular, our special needs kids, our foster kids, our homeless kids, kids representing the diversity of this state. Those youngest kids are not getting the quality education they otherwise would on Zoom school, as my four-year-old refers to it. And that's why it's critical that we safely get them back into schools as quickly as we can. Long Beach is a model, and we hope to see that replicated throughout this county and throughout the rest of the state of California. With that, one of the leaders in this county, that's Supervisor Janice Hahn. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Governor. 
Newsom for being here uh, today in beautiful uh, Los Angeles County and even more beautiful uh, city of Long Beach. And thank you, Governor, for your leadership, your incredible hard work uh, day in and day out for the people of California. None of us uh, in elective office uh, ever trained to govern during a pandemic. And the decisions that we've all been asked to make uh, while we thread the needle between protecting people's public health and protecting people's jobs and the economy has really uh, been untenable uh, for all of us. Uh, you uh, have shown great leadership. I haven't called you that many times. Uh, and thank you, uh, Majority Whip Senator Lena Gonzalez, for your advocacy on behalf of all of our communities here in LA County. Yay, California, uh, for the stimulus uh, bill that you're about to pass and announce. Yay for California. Yay for the governor. Uh, yay for uh, Speaker Rendon. Uh, yay for all of us, because you know what? We're still waiting for the federal government. We're still waiting for that bill uh, to bring real relief. And by the way, what California has in that package has something for everyone. Uh, it has uh, real money uh, for people who need it desperately now. It has money so people can pay the rent, money for property owners so they can pay their mortgage, uh, money for financial aid for our students, money for more food and our food banks. Uh, it is really an incredible uh, package, and we thank you uh, for doing that. And of course, thank you, Mayor Robert Garcia, and for your team. Uh, here in your health department uh, for uh, really getting the job done and getting Long Beach vaccinated and beyond. We did just have an opportunity uh, to tour uh, the vaccination site here at the convention center and talk to the people running this effort. I talked to two school nurses uh, here in Long Beach. School nurses are a rarity in themselves. These two nurses said what they're doing here, vaccinating people, was the high point of their calling as a nurse. That's how important vaccination has become and Long Beach's vaccination effort has become a model. And because you've been able to be nimble and effective, you were able to vaccinate your healthcare workers quickly. Then you moved on to vaccinate seniors quickly. And now you're in the process of vaccinating childcare workers, food industry workers, thank goodness our doc workers, and our teachers. And I've been an advocate for vaccinating our teachers as quickly as possible so we could protect them and we could get our students back to in-classroom learning. And thank you, Governor Newsom, for your decision to dedicate 10% of the doses to our teachers. And that's going to be a huge help as LA County begins also vaccinating teachers and school staff next week. And even while they've moved quickly, Long Beach has been able to move equitably and have brought vaccinations to their underserved neighborhoods that have been disproportionately affected by this terrible virus. I would like to see a bigger allotment. I want to say this, Mayor Garcia. I want to see a bigger allotment of doses to come to you. You've shown that you take your doses and you get them out quickly and you move through all these sectors while sometimes the rest of the county seems to be struggling. I want to see you get more doses so you can help us vaccinate Signal Hill and Lakewood and Catalina. I would love to see you just get more doses. So Governor, you and I are going to work together uh, to get Long Beach uh, more doses because they know how to do it right. Uh, and you know, before I hand the microphone over to uh, State Senator Lena Gonzalez, I just want to say how inspiring it is to see my friend Mayor Garcia leading this effort. You know, we've lost almost 20,000 souls to this virus here in LA County. Two of those were his parents. And the grief that he must have felt, and yet every single day showed up to continue to advocate for testing and vaccines so that other families would not experience the grief that he did. That's 
inspiring. That's a hero to me. Thank you, uh, Mayor Garcia, and thank you for hosting us today. And now I'd love to turn the microphone over to Senate uh, Whip. What's your title? Majority Whip. Senator Lena Gonzalez. Thank Take you. it away. I know, I apparently got a lot of titles uh, these, these days, but uh, one title I do have is mom, in addition to state senator, and so I want to thank you, uh, Governor Newsom, thank you, uh, Mayor Garcia, and thank you uh, to Supervisor Hahn. You know, as a state senator, yes, I'm heading up actually after this uh, to Sacramento to make sure we get the work done for the people of California, as the governor alluded, and to ensure that we actually have resources and dollars in their hands to support them through this very challenging crisis and pandemic. And I really want to thank Governor Newsom to have, for having the foresight to be able to help us through that. And as a mom, I'm very, very excited here in Long Beach to be able to say that I can send my child off now as, as a six-year-old on March 29th, that he can go into school and be with friends and be with his teachers, and that 7,000 teachers here in, in uh, Long Beach have been vaccinated. That is to be commended. As we know, it's been a powerful beam of light here in Long Beach that we have had so many of our essential workers vaccinated and that they've done so fast, they've done so seamlessly, but more so with intentionality. We know that black residents, Latino residents, especially our API community and the Cambodian community here deserve more attention. We know that they've not received the shot in many ways in, in the numbers that they should, representative to their population. But we know that this is a good pilot program for the rest of the state to carry, and we thank the good collaboration between state, local, and federal government to be able to make this happen so that our Black, black Latinx, and API communities get the vaccines that they deserve. It's the types of innovative strategies here in Long Beach, like large vaccination sites, translation and interpretation services, such as Spanish and Khmer, and listening and collecting public input from the community, as well as using mobile vaccine sites. I also want to thank the governor as well for having a mobile vaccine site in the city of Bell in the southeast communities, which is very, very important for LA County. I look forward to seeing the rest of these efforts, and then just call me up and let me know what I need to do to be able to work collaboratively to, say, to ensure that we have all of Long Beach vaccinated sooner than later. Now in Spanish, gracias a todos por estar aquí presentes. Soy, soy, soy Senadora Lina González y represento el Distrito 33 del Senado de California. Estamos aquí el día de hoy visitando un de los sitios de distribución, sorry, de vacunas de COVID-19 en la ciudad de Long Beach. Debemos continuar y repeclar uh, esfuerzos como los que están llevando aquí a través de todo el estado. Es importante que hagamos esto para lograr alcanzar equidad en de vacunas de aquí, aquí en Long Beach para las comunidades más necesitadas, incluyendo la comunidad latina, africano, americana y las familias de abajos ingresos. I hope that we can all again work together and I thank you all for being here. Well, we're here, uh, happy to take any questions. Let me just uh, acknowledge, and I was errant not acknowledging, I really appreciate Supervisor Hans acknowledging uh, the mayor's uh, tragic loss of both of his parents. And let me just echo her words and, and just reinforce, yeah, every time we talk about data, it, it can come across as cold uh, when you talk about deaths and you can talk about trends and you know percentages, but it, you know, the day we got to be mindful that behind every single one of those numbers, a real human being, a real life, and so uh, heart goes out to each and every one of them. Uh, but clearly, um, a special uh, e expression of condolences to our friend uh, and uh, his family. And we just want to again impress upon everybody the power and potency as we work through to get these vaccines administered of simple act of wearing a face covering. These non-pharmaceutical interventions remain the most powerful weapon we have in our arsenal until we get to that vaunted herd immunity. With that, happy to take any questions. Hi, Governor Newsom. Thanks for taking my question. Hunter Lee, Press-Telegram. Uh, you mentioned this briefly, but in what ways has the state followed Long Beach's model in other cities, or in what ways does it hope to follow in the future? I think 
the most important thing is really at this moment, this, this sort of critical moment, as we get closer and closer to the end of the school year, to recognize the urgency in the prioritization that's been placed here in this city to support our teachers and to support their health and to support our children and their mental, not just physical health, by encouraging them to get back into school safely. And I think fundamentally, they've truly demonstrably been a leader. And that has had an impact, I assure you, in the conversations we're having in Sacramento, conversations with groups large and small. Consistently, Long Breach is called out as an example of a district and a community that should be looked at, should be considered, and should be modeled in terms of their efforts. So I just highlight that as a contemporary point, but I can go back to the beginning of this pandemic and the work in terms of getting PPE, the work that was done to get testing sites up and operational, the work on equity as other examples of models. Governor Newsom, Channel 62, Maria Inca. Um, for the Hispanic community and the Latin people, maybe, uh, especially the teachers right now, wants to know in all the other counties, like especially Lake County, when are they getting the vaccines and how they can work out through this process to be, you know, doing so good as Long Beach right now? No, I appreciate it. Look, I spent a good part of yesterday in the community. I, I noted where we were in Englewood, uh, Boyle Heights, we were actually at a public housing. Uh, project at the Boys and Girls Club in the public housing project, disproportionately Latino, uh, Ramona Gardens, remarkable community, knocking on doors. Talk about meeting people where they are. Look, at the end of the day, a lot of these mass vaccination sites are fantastic if you own a car. These mass vaccination sites are wonderful if you have access to the tools of technology to be able to figure out and navigate how to get a reservation. These things are wonderful if you have the privilege of even learning about the fact that they even exist. But for so many communities in this state, the most diverse state and the world's most diverse democracy, California, we have a special and unique obligation to meet people where they are in language, peer to peer, address vaccine hesitancy. One of the biggest issues yesterday in that public housing site was trying to combat all the misinformation about what these vaccines are and what they are not. And so what we've done, and I want to just be brief in the response, but I also want to comprehensively respond because it's a foundational question. We put out uh, grants to 110 CBOs, community-based organizations in this state, in order to meet people where they are, literally, not figuratively, not rhetorically, not as a platitude, but to truly, as trusted messengers, go into these communities, educate people, organize people, and encourage and identify sites to do pop-up and mobile operations like those we're beginning to put and to deploy all throughout the state of California. That's foundational. We also put up a dashboard acknowledging in the aggregate as a state that we're not close to where we need to be in terms of meeting our equity targets, not even close to where we need to be. We need to own that. We also notably, and I'll conclude this question, the response, operationalized last week, last Tuesday, six days ago, two large scale FEMA sites in partnership with the governor's office of emergency services. One in Alameda County and one in LA at Cal State LA. What is significant about those sites are the first partnerships with the Biden administration doing 6,000 vaccines, vaccines a day, but it's the proximity of those sites to our diverse communities and underserved communities that made them distinctive and unique, not just because they were the first federal sponsored sites. And second, they have a mobile component and they're bringing these pop-up mobile units in and around those larger sites so we could substantively address the issue of equity. And that's just a model, another example of some of the efforts we're doing to address this fundamental issue of equity. Governor Newsom, uh, thanks again for visiting Southern California. Chris Ancarlo with KFI News. Uh, Couple questions. Number one, looking at what Long Beach has done successfully, you go up to 710 to Pasadena, they've been vaccinating teachers for just as long as Long Beach. The two things about those cities is they have their own health departments. You know, look at uh, LA County as a whole, obviously a different situation. Does this show the need to reform public health in California? 
Well, I have strong opinions about reforming public health writ large. In fact, we've put out some very dynamic proposals in this space. One fundamental proposal, it's called CalAIM. I'll spare you the details, but it is a once in a generation complete reform of our Medi-Cal system, Medicaid nationwide, Medi-Cal here in the state of California that foundationally goes to the core of that question and my response to that question in terms of provider payments and different strategies to incentivize the integration of brain health and physical health and to restructure our approach to true community-based, culturally competent healthcare delivery in this state. But I, I think your example of some of that autonomy, some of that jurisdictional frame is, is the right question because you're seeing examples, uh, stubborn examples that are a complete opposite in terms of the burdens, the labyrinth that some others face as small communities as it relates to their county health jurisdictions where they just don't have the privileges and opportunities of direct engagement. And so the answer is yes, I think it only affords further opportunity to underscore the need to comprehensively reform our healthcare delivery system writ large here in the state. Good morning, Governor Jaime Garcia from Univision. Let, let me ask you, can you help us um, to understand how this inequality, this uh, uh, difference between the vaccines uh, to the Latin community, the African-American community, and the white community are happening, and how hard is for you to get from the federal government enough vaccines to satisfy the largest uh, economic powerhouse in the country? Thank you. No, I, I look, I appreciate it. We're, it's hard to you know, express the contrast to where we were 32 days ago forget three or four months ago, as it relates to the relationship that we now have with the Biden administration, the transparency, and the direct day-to-day, -day, and I say day-to-day, -day, direct day-to-day -day engagement with the administration, the clarity, the conviction, the transparency, the accountability, uh, the honesty about where we are and where we're likely to be, at least with a window now of some certainty over a three-week period, but even a preview look into the future that we didn't have the privilege of uh, with the previous administration. The bottom line, the bottom line is we built out a distribution system that's only limitation is supply. We have the capacity to get about four, our goal is to build out a system with capacity to get to four million doses that we can administer each and every week. We again are designed a system that today has a supply constraint, and that's why we've only been able to achieve 1.4 million because we've run out of supplies, and that's why sites like this have toggled back. They're not fully operationalized. So as Moderna and Pfizer vaccine are manufactured, more and more coming to the state, we'll be able to increase that throughput. We have J&J, &J, we hope as early as this week, gets emergency use authorization. This will be what most of us will be covering in a few days, the likely emergency use authorization of the J&J single dose vaccine. That then will provide us window and opportunity as what those vaccine distributions look like into March. Here's what I think we can look forward to. We know we're looking 1.4 million vaccines this week, 1.5 million next week. That's modest compared to what we've received in the past. But I'm very confident with J&J, &J, the end of March, April, we're going to start seeing things really ramp up. May, June, July, game changer. All of a sudden, we're at a completely different level. So I ask people, mindful again, of being optimistic but not overly optimistic, that over the course of the next number of weeks, we're still going to be in a constrained supply environment, but over the course of the next few months, you're going to see throughput and opportunity to expand these tiers and expand availability and access and to allow us to drive this equity, not just message, but to drive the administration of these vaccines with an equitable overlay that will truly do justice to the values of the state. Good morning, Governor. Tony Ginyard, NBC4 News. Uh, thanks for letting us ask questions today. Uh, being realistic on the supply issue with the vaccine, we're looking at large sites in L.A. City having to be shut down, weather and shortage. Expanding eligibility on March 1st, is that realistic? And also, uh, one component of the recall campaign that we've been hearing time and time again is the handling of the vaccine issue. Is it a distraction? Has it changed how you're moving forward? Thank no. you. 
We're, we're focused every single day on getting more doses into people's arms, and we've done that. Again, um, there's few nations in the world that have administered more vaccines than the state of California. I don't know any other state that's averaging 200,000 vaccine doses being administered on a daily basis. 1.4 million, again, just in the last week. We, just 48 hours ago, administered some 244,000 doses. Only constraint now manufactured supply on a national basis. Uh, I've had the privilege of being all throughout this state. We're going to three other communities this afternoon. Um, and you're absolutely correct. We are starting to see in every part of the state these sites pull back on the basis of limited manufactured supply. That's a nationwide issue, including, and I appreciate your question, the subtext of your question, weather-related impacts associated with 702,000 doses of vaccines that have been delayed in the state of California because of the impact uh, of that weather system to the supply chain across this country. Pfizer was able to get through most of their vaccines. Moderna was a little bit more delayed. We'll make up for that, but there are some hiccups. But you asked a fundamental question, and let me directly answer. I have no trepidation in saying this. We're going to get that 10 percent set aside. That 10 percent set aside uh, is going to happen. It's going to happen later this week, uh, the 1st of March. And we're going to move forward. And that is a commitment. And we are resolved to get that done for our teachers and for our educators. Doesn't look like we have any more questions. Well, I'm going to take advantage of that and, uh, and then take advantage of, uh, of thanking each and every one of you for the privilege of your time and thank everybody for the opportunity update. But moreover, just thank all the incredible men and women that are here making this site and so many sites here in Long Beach possible, led by your extraordinary mayor, Mayor Garcia. Thank you all very, very much.